Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to class. Hope all of you are doing well. Thank you for joining in on time. Uh, welcome to all our e-learning students as well. Um, yeah, I hope uh, all of you are doing, doing good as well. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, this week is your um, week, your, your first assessment. Uh, for the online students who are here right now with me. The um, assessment has been put up on the stream. Uh, you have time till the 14th of March to complete it. So please ensure that you do. This goes into part of your uh, final grades. So this is important to uh, complete. Um, so ensure that you do this by, by the 14th of March. And for the e-learning students as well, your graded assessment has also been uh, put up. Please ensure that you um, attempt the, those because they're graded, they are marked, and uh, will also score into your final grade as well. Um, and I do see from, for the online students, one, one student has already completed their, uh, uh, their assessment. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's easy. Just uh, ensure that you can, you, you, could, you can attempt this only once. So please be careful while you read the question. You won't be able to attempt a second time, OK? Uh, especially unlike the e-learning students where you have your knowledge check, you have two attempts. Here you have just a single attempt. So be careful as you read through and uh, uh, attempt your questions. OK, all right. So um, let's move ahead into class. I hope uh, uh, you all took time. I had I had put up the video that we had uh, that I had showed you in part last time. I couldn't show you the entire thing, but I hope you all took the time to go back and uh, uh, look at the video. It, it's it's very useful when you have a live experience, live counseling session that's happening, and you know you're able to learn from that. So for those of you who have not. A lot of the skills we learned last week and maybe one or two that we're going to be doing this week um, is there in that video. So please go back and check. And I have a couple of videos today also to show you, which I will put in the stream um, so that you know you can you can at any time go back to it and uh, have a look. All right. So uh, uh, is everybody well? I did hear even one voice. Thank you, Divya, for the message. Nice to meet you. I hope all of you are all OK. Everyone's okay? Yes, Pastor. Okay, good. All right. Yes, Pastor. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So um, uh, quickly, uh, just to recap, uh, uh, anyone would like to just, in a couple of sentences, talk about what we did last week? Yes, Divya. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah, we went through uh, the skills, attending skills, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, also how uh, I think in uh, listening, uh, it can be done through listening, observing, mm -hmm. uh, and in listening, we talked about verbal, uh, visuals, vocals, verbals, uh, then body language. Um, yeah, and uh, and also listening, we talked about, I believe, clarification, summarizing, uh, paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's how, that's what I remember. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. That is that's that is an excellent effort. Okay, so were you all able to uh, use any of this in your uh, or or take some time to? Um, you know, in your daily interactions with people, were you able to uh, use any of this? Anybody? Yes, the eye contact one, uh, it was really helpful. The cycle around the face, <laughs> that was helpful. Okay. And also, uh, okay. uh, our attention to uh, the person whom we are listening to is uh, something which uh -huh. I personally could work out this week. Okay, very nice. Great. Okay, good. So um, yeah, if, if it's not for counseling, you can actually use these skills even for your interpersonal relationships, and uh, they really do help. OK, so uh, the, these were some, some of the things that, uh, that um, Divya just spoke about. 
we looked at attending in um, the three Bs and uh, uh, plus body language plus so the three Bs was not uh, verbal, voice and um, visuals and B was body language. Uh, we spoke about the solar, right? We spoke about how we can also attend by listening and observing and certain skills of active listening. Uh, and these are there. Some of these are there in that entire video. It's around a 12 or a 13 minute video. And that's why I didn't want to play the whole thing, but it's there. So please ensure that you do that. So the next skill that we are going to be uh, um, studying today is the skills of responding. Now, the skills of responding uh, are, uh, you know, are equally important. And in fact, this is something, uh, this, this skill uh, is what really ties in your entire counseling session. The way that you respond actually steps forward into what, how your, your session could go, right? So it is, it's something that is useful throughout uh, your entire counseling process. And of course, especially in the early phase, because it's all about exploration. It's all about finding out. So the way that you um, actually respond really helps the counselee to uh, open up a lot more, to, to bring up a lot more of details um, than, than what may come about if, if we aren't keenly, number one, listening and attending, and secondly, responding. So what's the purpose um, of responding? This, uh, the purpose is to help a counselor to clarify what information is coming, not just to clarify, but also to encourage the client's um, details or the stories that the client comes up with or the counsel counselee comes up with. Okay. Now, this is, uh, uh, this is also a great skill to teach um, your counselees what to do or when responding to each other. So, for example, when you're having a couple together, this becomes a great skill to teach them how they can respond to one another, right? Uh, and, and as they listen to you, and as uh, you bring, a, bring about the right kind of responses, they're also learning or picking up doing the same thing. So you're actually staying as an example in the way that they can they can respond. So what what in uh, in uh, in in when you break responding down, it lets your counselee know that he or she has been heard, has been understood, is being cared for, and is supported. It makes when you respond rightly, you will find that a person feels a sense of being cared for or being understood. It also gives the counselor a feedback on what he or she said has come across. It, it, when I respond and if I hear my counselee either giving me a positive answer or a negative answer, it still clarifies and gives me a certain feedback about what I said has come across to them. It allows also the counselor to check on your accuracy. accuracy in hearing what you what was said, in also the assumptions you've made, in maybe noticing something that uh, they have not said, but maybe are implying to say, it helps you to check your accuracy. It also, when you are resp responding, it helps the counselor avoid that illusion that you have understood. Uh, like when they say, um, for example, your, your counselee may say something like, um, yeah, uh, uh, how has your week been? Oh, my week's been well, right? And now we're making assumptions, whatever that week means. So, so you're saying, um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you found that your week was well. Would you like to elaborate on that? So it, when I'm doing that, I'm actually actually helping the counselee tell me more details about the well of the week or the okay of the of whatever they've been through. So really clarifying, because sometimes we use some of these words very flippantly, and we have not really, we may not really pick, pick up. Like, for example, your counselor may say, I feel extremely depressed. So then, uh, you know, we have an understanding of the word. You may have an understanding of the word. But the word 
as it seems to them, may be quite different, or it may have a lot more of layers to it. So really to help in um, uh, in avoiding that that uh, illusion that, that you have understood. Okay, So it, it clarifies a lot more. It also helps to prevent um, that, that space in which a counselor may be inattentive during the conversation like for example when the stories are going on really long your mind takes a vacation you know you're either sleepy or you know you've heard so much or sometimes maybe the details that they give are um are really like for example uh you know i i, I keep when, when i have uh counselees who come and who are talking about very technical things like maybe something about their work is very technical and you know they're sharing something about that I'm not a very technical person. I'm a more relational person. And sometimes it's very hard to stay in tune with that. So it keeps you to going on that vacation in your head, right? And you're you're being in, attentive to them. And it's and it uh, and it prevents that inattentive inattentiveness that could happen. It also helps the counselee focus on um, on what is going on on their on their self or be able to vent out, to be able to sort out their issues, um, to express their feeling, and also to be able to deal very effectively with emotions. After this, I'll show you a, show you um, an entire clip of how a responding happens. And then you know, you know, we, then we could get into learning about it, because it will really help to connect some of these things. Okay? It also helps the counselee uh, to, to move to, to uh, more uh, deeper levels of expression, right? Maybe a lot more. Maybe they're feeling a certain thing about something, but when you keep responding, they've actually gone deeper and deeper and deeper into really understanding something for themselves. And you're doing it at their pace. You're not hurrying them up. You're doing it at their pace. It also helps the counselee to think and articulate more clearly. So all because they've said, OK, you're sad. I mean, uh, the person says, hey, I'm feeling very depressed. And uh, your, your response is moving away from that core point, and you're moving into something else. Like for, for them, for example, they say, I, I feel extremely depressed when I'm at home. right? And if you're immediately going to jump to another thing, say, OK, what about how do you feel at office? So you've, you've lost out on the opportunity to really find out or understand or help them come to a place of where they are at their home. So maybe uh, you know a follow-up response question is, um, it, it seems like uh, like you know like you feel extremely sad because things aren't going well in your house. Um, what what about it is it that makes you this depressed? So so you see it, it just adds in a little bit more details. They may be giving you more details or they may be, able to express it themselves. So they may be able to articulate it more clearly. It also helps the counselee to arrive at a solution at some times to their own problem. So as and when they come about, and you will see this in the clip, uh, some of these things, you will see how beautifully it comes out, you know, as the person's expressing the way that they accept certain realities or they feel that something should be done about something, they begin to figure out that this is the part that I need to move into. Okay, it also helps the counselor to clarify what you're expected to do. So even as you are responding to them, it gives you an idea of what the next step is. What is it that we may need to progress into? Right? Maybe it is an action step, or maybe it is further exploration. It is maybe personalizing something, but it gives you a greater idea. And it also helps the counselor to deal effectively with the issue or problem um, or, or the other needs that are raised. So, so these, these, um, uh, this skill, uh, if you look at it, is, is one of the most important ones during your counseling session. And it is necessary to, to take people through this process um, carefully, slowly, uh, intentionally. OK? I'm just going. I'll just uh, play the um, uh, play the other um, uh, the video for you so that uh, it can help you understand. Just give me a minute.
This video is a short simulated counseling session demonstrating the basic communication skills of empathic responses and the use of silence. So Joe, we've been talking about school and the conviction, and I'm wondering if we can talk a bit about what's been going on at home. Yeah, sure. How have things been going with your mom? I mean, not great. Um, she's been really, really pissed with me ever since um, the conviction. So, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a while and nothing's changed, so I don't know. Yeah, she was pretty upset about the stealing when it happened. And, and you're worried that it's going to impact your your future relationship? Yeah, I mean, um, I've never, ever seen her yell the way she did. And it was, um, yeah, it was shocking. Uh, she hates my friends. Um, but, you know, other than her, that's all I have. So what am I supposed to do? How does it feel when your mom gets angry like that? I mean, I don't like it, um, but I don't really think it's justified. Um, I think she has to be around more for her to really get a say in my life. So you're feeling annoyed that she's getting so mad when she isn't even around to see? Yeah, I mean, um, she's she's got this new relationship with um, Tom. Uh, so in like weekends, she's in White Rock at his place, two, three nights a week. She's you know she's out. It is what it is, you know. Come home, empty house. So how could she? mad at me for what I get up to. There's no one at home. It, it sounds like you feel somewhat neglected by your mom. I mean, yeah, I guess, um, you know, we used to, we were never like the closest, but I, mean, we thought we, I thought we had a pretty good relationship. Um, you know, we'd talk, we'd uh, have meals together. It wouldn't be, a, yeah, I'd come home, we'd talk. It's, now that just doesn't happen. I'm often home alone. Don't see anybody. She's, you know, all she cares about is him. It feels more alone now, and you're worried that you're you're not a priority for your mom anymore. Yeah, I, um, I guess so. Um, I'm not, um, I'm not a perfect um, person, but um, parents are supposed to stick by their kids, good and bad. So, yeah. Must feel feel pretty vulnerable to not know how she's feeling. Yeah, I mean, I just um, I wish she cared about what's going on in my life. Are you scared that you no longer matter to her as much as you used to? Yeah, I mean, um, she's um, she has every right to, you know, be happy with in a relationship. Um, but it just feels like she's she's not prioritizing me at all, and it hurts. It's it's um it hurts. She's all I have. You care about your mom, and you want her to be happy, and you want her to have a life. But at the same time, you hope that you could be a part of that life. Yeah, and I mean, like, my dad's not in the picture, so she really is all. I have. She's the only family I have. Right. So you're feeling protective over that real significant relationship. Yeah. She's my mom. I know I'm supposed to, you know, I, I'm supposed to, as I grow up, be independent, but it doesn't mean you don't need your mom anymore. It doesn't mean you don't need someone still there for you. Yeah. How about your relationship with your dad? I mean, what relationship? Um, I have so little to do in his life that it's um, it's it's like uh, I don't even matter to him. So you feel pretty disconnected from him. Yeah. I mean, um, seems more like a person I see occasionally instead of a father. He's got his new family now, so I, you know, that's that is what it is. Do you feel resentful towards your dad for having this new family? 
No. Um, I mean, he was young when they when they divorced. I was only four, so you know, I can't blame him for for finding a new relationship and having a new family. But just because you have new kids doesn't mean you just give up on the one you already have. I just uh, I don't think that he should have um, just written me off. I can hear some sadness about about your dad not being able to prioritize all of his children. Yeah, it does make me sad sometimes, you know. Um, I basically don't have a father. And um, if it hasn't happened by now, it basically never will. So, you know, I just have to accept that. That's just the way it's going to be. A part of you has resigned to that acceptance of superficial relationship between the two of you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, so any thoughts about uh, how did you just a couple of uh, um, maybe comments about how you saw what were some of the responses of the counselor that really helped the counselee to share and to bring up uh, uh, what he was feeling? Any, any comments? What did you all observe? The emotions that she said were really nice. Like you were scared, uh, you feel bad, you feel sad. Those are words that really help. Uh, she really aligned uh, herself to the counselor. I think that made mm. that's what I realized. Like uh, she she helped him to understand what he's actually feeling. Right. She actually helped him understand what she was feeling and she uh, a lot of times she actually bought those emotions up in the moments and he said where he was feeling that way he said yes where he felt differently he said no so you see that responding helps to clarify whether you're making the right kind of a judgment or an assumption about where they're at okay uh, what other thoughts do you all have she really had a formula was following but not over sticking to it okay all right okay she had a formula all right that's an interesting comment okay she was empathizing uh, very well with uh, what he was going through so he was able to relate actually so uh, more often uh, he would say uh, like she is uh, his mother is the only one i have so uh, so she's trying to uh, you know in that responses uh, she could infer how much he needs that relationship so she's mm -hmm. trying to the, in the uh, subsequent question she's trying to bring about uh, you know even the father aspect to that mm -hmm. and trying to understand what really is happening mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? And I think Any she's other also comments? giving um, space and silence um, rather than not rushing in and making any early judgments. She's giving mm -hmm. silences and spaces to understand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. She used silent very well. That's right. Very right. Yeah. I think someone's written, she sounded like an expert and mindful to her profession and persona. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. So um, uh, this this the the art of responding is again you know it's a skill that uh, we all can pick up. The idea is to ensure that you go at the pace of your counselling, not to overshoot. And we will we will be later on looking at something called as high risk responses, which um, which is making responses before. Uh, before the time is right, okay? So it could be different kinds of responses. So just taking it little by little, slowly being in the moment of allowing your counselee to have that emotional experience that they are going through, uh, rather than wanting to hurry them off 
from moving away from that significant emotion that they're experiencing into finding a solution or trying to find out an action point. So um, this part of it, just, just being able to respond is, is very keen in how we, we work through these skills of responding, OK? Uh, moving on. All right. So let's just look at what, um, what this entire thing of responding is what, when we're looking at responding skills. So responding skills, um, it, it's, it's like what we would call like a checking out process. That is, uh, you are expressing the essence of one is the content about what they're saying, as well as the feeling that your counselee has communicated to you. So you're, it's like you're checking out to see, have I got this right? Have I got what they're experiencing right? Have I got what they're feeling right? It's it's almost like a reflection. It's you're reflecting something back to really bring about an understanding. Okay, and while you're doing that, you're also uh, doing the next stage, which is personalizing the problem, which is helping them see what how they are contributing to the problem that is at hand. Okay. Now, as the listener, your response needs to be short. It needs to be succinct, that is, you know, very crisp, and needs to be stated in your own words. So it is important to check out and verify your accurate perception of those little segments of the person's communication to you. So each of those segments, what it does, it captures a thought, it captures a feeling, or it captures a meaning, or several of these together. It can capture a thought, it can capture a feeling, it can capture the content, it can capture the, uh, the meaning of, of what they're saying all together. And it could be connected in very many ways, but that, that's what you're attempting to do. So in this kind of resp response, what you're doing is you're listening to almost like a bite-sized piece of the other person's communication, you know, just a little chunk you've probably taken out and you're stating the essence of it to the other in your own words. So when, you, when you're doing that checking, when, you, when you're checking on their communication, you are also allowing uh, yourself to digest a small amount of content and feelings rather than the whole picture together. It's small, small pieces that you are uh, one for yourself as a counselor, but also largely for the counselee. So when you break down this conversation in this way, you're allowing both yourself as well as the counselee to focus on their abilities to manage that segment or that piece of communication that they may be going through. So that's what response, responding does. So we're going to be looking at five categories of responses. So when, um, and these are, uh, and we will go into each of these, okay? So generally these respo uh, responding skills could be divided into these five, where you're acknowledging, where you're reflecting content, where you're reflecting feeling or reflecting meaning, and something that we call as a summative reflection. OK, so we we'll, we'll look into each of this one by one. So the first one is the acknowledgment responses. And this, like I said last time, you may see a bit of an overlap in some of these skills. We spoke about uh, some of these in attending itself, but it's an overlap, right? When you're listening, you're actually also, you also need to respond as you're listening. So what are acknowledgment responses are? Uh, brief one or two, three word statements or certain nonverbal gestures. These responses, what, they, what do they demonstrate? It demonstrates to the counselor that you are following with them. You are alongside with them through that conversation. So such response help the other person know that you are being listened to. So when someone's talking, when you're uh, not just looking into the eyes of the person, that's why, you know, for maybe when you are um, probably when you're preaching, right? Or when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're talking to a whole crowd, 
you you don't get um, the only back uh, only feedback that you're getting from another person is the way that they nod their heads right the people can be looking straight into your eyes but then maybe absolutely lost so in the same way in a when you when you're in a one on one interaction with a counselee it's just not enough to just you know stay silent and look quite blankly at them these these responses really help to um to to make the counselee feel that that there is a listening there is an acknowledgement that's there so examples of this are uh, you know how about that or uh huh or mm -hmm, go on yes sure um, you know or did you do that or you know that sounds good right or, or whatever you know anything that helps them to see that you are in course alongside with them Okay. The second kind that we're looking at is what we're saying is reflecting content. Reflecting content is listening accurately to, an, uh, to the other person, to the counselee, and reflecting the essence of the content to, the, uh, to your counselee in your own words. Okay. So it's, it's listening plus the essence of the content. So this is what you're doing here is um, uh, you focus on the content of what the counselee cou is telling you. You're, you're focusing very clearly on that co uh, content. Now, this focusing includes the thoughts. It includes ideas. It includes any kind of beliefs. It includes their factual data, any of it. You're just looking at the content. So when you're reflecting on the content, the focus can be on the thoughts or the ideas of the of your counselee, which could be the subject of that particular communication. So this is why is it useful? Because again, it enables you to understand the content which is being communicated to you. And this by by doing this, you're clarifying maybe a plan or an agreement um, that is that is going on. It also reduces the repetition on the part of the other person because you're able to actually confirm to them that you have understood. So when you're when you're actually reflecting that content, um, you're saying, "Hey, I've understood that part. Now you can actually go on." It also lets you give the uh, the other person a feedback on how they are coming across, which um, which probably is giving them better insights about themselves so this this can be a result of the reflective listening process so you know when they're saying something and you've understood something it gives them a feedback of how they're coming coming across it also helps the other person or, or your counselee gain direction towards a solution or a concern or a problem that they that they may have okay uh, like let's let's take for example uh, here the counselor is saying um, my brother and I have been like cats and dogs. Okay, so they've given you some kind of a content. So here, what are you doing? You are actually reflecting that and saying, okay, so your brother and you, sorry, sorry, your brother and you have been fighting. Uh, have you all been fighting like cats and dogs, or or you're you're, you're making? So, so what I see is that you all have been fighting um, recently, right? So when you're reflecting that content. You're, you're not repeating exactly what the counselee is saying, but you've picked up the most important uh, content information and using their own words to, to give them a feedback, okay, that, that you are, you do understand what they have just said. Okay, so let's, let's uh, look at some examples. Okay, here your counselee is saying, probably the worst class I have is literature, okay? So they've told you a lot about maybe the class, and then they've said, probably the worst class I have is literature. What could be a response that, um, um, that you, you, can, you can make? What is the response you could do? This is just a trial, okay? So, uh, you know, feel free to respond. How would, how would you like to respond to this? You can write it down on the chat also, so that uh, you know, even as you're thinking, you could quickly write it down to, I mean, type it in. Yeah? Any thoughts?
property yeah um, yeah. Maybe we can say uh, I feel that we have a hard time learning literature or something. Okay, uh, it seems like you have a hard time. Okay, so I've just put up a. Uh, maybe you can say something. Mean, it seems like this year has been specially tough for you. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Or it, it seems like literature, the class literature, has been a very tough one. Is that true? So literature is not something you enjoy learning. Okay, great, great. Yeah. So that's good. Okay, let's look at another one. Uh, this has been really a tough year for me. Okay, I, I think I, I think I made a mistake in that. Yeah, okay. So this is probably this is something that uh, the, the counselee does does say uh, again. All right. Okay, let's let's look at the next one. Um, let's look. Okay. So the next one is how do you reflect feelings? Okay, so the first one we said was reflecting content, and now we're looking at how do we reflect what is the next part of it is to be able to reflect feelings now reflecting feelings is you're listening accurately to what your counselor is saying and you're reflecting the feeling component of the communication to your counselor again in your own words so the earlier was more content related this is more feeling uh, the the component of feeling comes about so what are you doing here you're reflecting, uh, uh, you're, you're listening accurately, and you are naming the emotional state of the other person in your own words. And you saw that in that video very well. You know, in ev almost every, after every sentence, she's actually brought about emotional state of the other person. So it, what does it involve? It involves stating a feeling word, like she said, disappointed, um, sad upset uh, uh there are many words that she used okay so what does it do you're, you're basically stating a feeling that actually captures the emotion of your counseling it it also involves expressing it in your own words the the feelings that stated or that is strongly implied by the other sometimes and in that video it showed that he may not he didn't tell you how he's feeling but he says you know uh, I'm I'm all alone now. She it's okay that she may have a family and all of that, but I'm still all alone. So she says uh, she says you know you feel upset that your mom uh, doesn't prioritize you or or you know you'd like to be prioritized just like the others in that family, right? So there is that that uh, what may be implied is what you're also reflecting. So the purpose of reflecting is to bring even those vaguely expressed feelings into clear awareness okay something that may be very vague put in the mind uh, that that is coming out clear so so um, you know sometimes others talk about their feelings as it or them or that as if feelings were not part of themselves but then what you're attempting to do is to help them reflect and say this is how i'm feeling and it's okay to feel that way so it it's assisting actually your counselee to own their own feelings to own it and say okay i feel sad i feel upset i feel lonely feelings are often central uh, more central it's more uh, core than actually the content and that's what you're attempt attempting to bring about in that communication that's what you're attempting to bring about because there is value in not just hearing the positive feelings, but also the negative feelings. And people need to express themselves when they especially have strong emotions. Uh, and this listening, this kind of uh, uh, responding to feeling or reflecting of the feeling actually allow, allows the listener or your counselee to repeat and participate in this process. So it's, it's a very crucial point of, of being able to do that. So let's look at this example. The counselee says, it seems that no matter how hard I try, um, how hard I try or how much I do it, I cannot get comfortable with cold calling. Um, this, this, is, this is probably at a, um, at a work setting. Okay, It just seems so icky to me, but I know that I have to do it to acquire more clients. Okay, So the counselor here says, uh, and that's frustrating for you because it's a big part of your job right now. So you wish you could feel more at ease doing it, right? So what she's also doing, this counselor is also doing, is has labeled the feeling um, and 
uh, has recognized that it's something important for them and also bringing about a, a suggestion of uh, how could they be feel at more ease doing it so they say yeah it is frustrating but i need to learn how to do it so you know they've come to that point of saying okay i think i need to learn about how doing so here the person has also come up with a solution of saying okay i've, I've got to figure out that i have to deal with what i'm feeling or maybe do something about what i'm going through and feel at ease about that okay so that's with reflecting feeling so let's look at uh, let's look at some uh, some ways of how you can generally begin your responses when you're using feeling reflections you can begin your responses in in some of these ways because it's 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 helpful to understand how we can we can use these words like you feel uh, you sound you look you're you're looking you're sounding so this this what what you're doing through this is you're helping them to come in uh, in contact with their most subtle feelings. So it could be feelings of disgust, of fear, of anger, and all of this helps. So as a listener, you're looking for those hidden feelings and bringing them out in the open. So you, sometimes you're making that suggestion, and that's why you're saying that, you know, you feel this way, or you look like this, you look sad, or you look uh, annoyed. So the focus is on the emotion of the other. So and the process is, is with emphasis on the component on on the feeling so uh, you know it's it's necessary for us to um, sometimes our feeling vocabulary is very limited we just know sad angry happy right but but um, we can we need to describe feelings more accurately and i think something that we can we can do is uh, just if you just google search it and look for it's called the spectrum of feelings, right? And you will find in the sad, mad, glad, there are so many feelings that are there. I think I put it up in, in one of the classes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think I did put it up. Where you're able to see, uh, no, sorry, I put it up in Bible college last week. That's that's where we did it, right? So it was uh, to, to be able to see that there are many more emotions that we can actually pick on and help them. So take time to look through a list and think of about these feelings and you know bring about this in your vocabulary as you are talking to people because it's very helpful for others also to um, know what exactly they may be going through okay so let's try this okay uh, the counselee is saying this sure has been a horrible week nothing went right at the job and my wife and i argued all the time okay how would you respond to the to the feeling Uh, we can say it looks like you really didn't uh, enjoy this week much or it didn't go well. Feeling. Respond to the feeling. Bring about a feeling. You're reflecting feeling here. Not Something just the content. Hmm. Go on, yes. go on, Jafina. Uh, yeah, Divya here, ma'am. Oh, Divya, uh, sorry, 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 Divya. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah. So uh, something like uh, you feel frustrated that uh, your job was hard uh, this week and um, uh, you argued with your wife uh, and you, you wish that this was a better week. OK, good, good. Right. So um, maybe I'd say something that, oh, I, I imagine that you must be feeling extremely disappointed in the way that your week went. Uh, you know, nothing seemed to have turned right. and. It must have been a, a bigger uh, dampener for you with with uh, your wife and uh, you arguing, right? So I I've, I've probably I bring in two emotions or I club two things together. Perfectly okay. It's just of uh, she. This person hasn't said he hasn't said anything about how he's feeling, and that's what you're attempting to bring up, right? Uh, you, you're just getting them to come in terms with what they are feeling or where they are at okay the next one is to reflect meaning reflecting meaning is uh, in addition to what you are doing earlier it is it is an additional part of you are combining both the feeling and the content so you're you're listening accurately and you are reflecting the essence of both the content as well as the um, uh, I, I, 
the content as well as the feeling. So uh, this reflecting meaning is what what you're doing is you, you the the content and the feelings are tied together, and often you do that by using uh, maybe words like um, um, uh, you know maybe words like because or when. And this this skill, or what it does, it it involves the understanding uh, and reflecting of what they have said together. So you've tied something together and you you put it together. So there is a formula that generally is used. I'm sorry, the example doesn't bring about the formula. So the formula that can be used is you feel something because something, right? You feel the feeling because of the content, or you feel dash the feeling about dash right so what you're doing is you're bringing you're putting it all together so you're bringing the meaning you're bringing the meaning by reflecting the feeling as well as the content okay so the example um, the example here is um, is um, the counselor is saying sorry the counselee is saying sorry i've uh, switched the two the counselee is saying i just don't understand my boss one minute he has one thing to say and the other, he changes it completely. So what you can say here is you feel really confused by him because of the way that he behaves with you, OK? Or you feel uh, you feel really lost because there seems to be a mismatch in the way that he deals with you. So there is you are bringing two things together. You're actually reflecting uh, two things together. You're, you're merging not just the content, but as well as well as the meaning together. Okay, um, let's look at an example. So the counselor here is saying, my supervisor is always after me, micromanaging me. He just has no clue how hard I work. Okay, um, so what you could say here is, remember when you're putting two things together, you could say something like, you know, you feel micromanaged. You, you're probably using the same words. Or um, you know you feel very claustrophobic being micromanaged, right? So claustrophobic is maybe a word to just feel too stuck, or you feel stuck that you're being micromanaged because of the way uh, of the of the kind of work that uh, your supervisor does not uh, recognize, or because the fact that you you don't feel recognized, right? So there are two things that you're saying. One is you're feeling a certain way. And you've made meaning is because you feel that you're not being recognized. So there are two things that's coming up and that's being merged in this uh, in this example. Okay, um, okay, we'll we'll just go through the next one. Yeah, the next one is to uh, is reflective summarizing. Now, in reflective summarizing, what you're attempting to do over here is you're listening accurately to another person and reflecting the main points in their commun communication. So you're actually condensing all of what a person has said into two or three sentences. Now, the process of reflecting uh, requires that you um, have heard it in manageable uh, segments, right? You may have heard a whole lot of things. And then following each segment, you've, you've done what is done previously. And now you are expressing your perception of the essence of that entire segment, and you're checking that accuracy back. That's what you're attempting to do in a reflective summarizing through all of this. So these are some of the main um, ways that you 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 use to, to reflect that. Remember, as you're doing this, very often it is like a to and fro. It comes as a um, you know, you, you're doing some part of it, and then you're allowing them to talk. Again, you're doing some of it. So you keep continuing to work through that. Because as uh, you're helping, you, what you're doing is you're building an understanding within themselves of what is going on. Okay. So these are some of the types. Um, we are at an hour. Uh, so let's take a break of 10 minutes, and we'll come back, and we'll take it on from there. And midway. I'd like to show you another video about resistance. Uh, when What do we do when we face resistance from the counseling? OK, uh, we'll meet back in 10 minutes. It's 10.50. We'll be back by 11 o'clock.